No, no, it's all, I'll be just selling more like uh, coal mines and things like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hello? Hello everyone and welcome to our seminar today. Hope you had a chance to meet and greet and have some sushi and wine that was gladly provided by the Neodent. And uh, glad to see some of you new faces in here. And as you know, the topic today is medical and anesthetic emergencies in a dental office. 
And uh, you know our speaker today is Dr. Alexander Intipov. So please welcome. <laughs> One, two, one, two. Okay, good. So, uh, hello everyone, and uh, this is the first time we're doing some uh, something hands-on. Uh, so we, uh, we'll try to set up uh, a little bit here. And uh, uh, I was asked to do a little presentation on the uh, medical emergencies in the dental office, and uh, uh, including the uh, sedation uh, protocols and how to uh, manage the anesthetic emergencies. Uh, we'll start with the, um, with the patient setup. And uh, uh, d anybody is doing uh, oral sedation in the, in the audience? Uh -huh. Anybody is doing IV sedation? Um, so the only difference is uh, uh, when we uh, give uh, medications IV, uh, it's a little bit more controlled, uh, but it can have the same consequences uh, in terms of over-sedation, and uh, uh, certain things can happen uh, uh, during the uh, oral sedation. So I will... Um, okay, so we have this uh, thing. Is there a delay in the... Igor, is there a delay in that thing? Yeah, okay. Um, so, yeah, so I wanted to show uh, the way we do it in our office, and this is why we set up the down chair, and I brought the crash cart uh, that we actually use uh, uh, in, the, in the office. And uh, uh, everybody has uh, uh, AD in the office, in the dental office? Yeah? Anybody who doesn't have AD? In the dental office, everybody has one. Good. So I will start with. Um, Yeah, so the presentation that I was preparing um, didn't save, so we will start with, uh, let's see.
Okay, so uh, Igor, so can you uh, can, uh, can we do uh, uh, the camera? So if we show uh, the the medicate the drug, uh, you can you can see it. Yeah. So we'll go through the uh, uh, protocols today, and uh, um, so since uh, the presentation didn't save for some reason on the hard drive, it uh, stayed on my home computer. I will just uh, improvise and do verbal then. Uh, so, but this is what we need uh, to do uh, anesthesia in the. Uh, uh, dental office, uh, the uh, general uh, dentist uh, that uh, provide that service in their uh, facility uh, is not required to hold the GA permit uh, himself, but they can have uh, uh, somebody who comes in, either a uh, certified anesthesiologist, and uh, the, uh, uh, they're pushing right now for the uh, anesthesi uh, dental anesthesiologist to become a separate dental specialty. Uh, which is uh, which is a good thing for patient uh, safety. Uh, the new uh, Calib law uh, that uh, came into effect requires uh, uh, all oral surgeons who provide uh, uh, IV sedation to the pediatric population uh, to um, uh, offer the uh, family uh, uh, to uh, have a second provider uh, uh, who is an anesthesiologist. So in order to have uh, um, um, everything set up. Uh, we have to have a, a number one office set up and uh, have a licensed provider uh, and uh, who has a permit or the degree and uh, uh, the on-site evaluation of the office uh, uh, is necessary uh, uh, per provider. So um, in order to, uh, uh, to do this uh, uh, we have to have uh, office uh, facility and uh, equipment. Uh, everything needs to be equipped and uh, maintained in good, in, uh, good condition. The operating theater, the operating room that we have, uh, has to have uh, enough room for the, uh, all the uh, team members to move freely. Uh, and uh, uh, the patient should be uh, positioned so the operating team can maintain the airway uh, uh, quickly. Uh, and uh, we can alter the patient position uh, in case of emergency. Uh, so the, that means the chair needs to be reclined. Uh, we have to have a, a special uh, board uh, for the CPR to administer CPR. And uh, uh, Paul, uh, my, my assistant, will come out now and he'll be helping me out. So I'll be um, reading this uh, uh, presentation from my phone. Uh, and uh, Paul will be showing you certain things. But this is, uh, this is the setup because that's the most important, like uh, setting up the dental office or uh, anything else to start uh, doing basic uh, uh, dentistry. Uh, same thing if we do anesthesia, we have to have this. Uh, so the operating uh, table uh, uh, or chair uh, uh, should be positioned so the operating team can maintain the airway quickly after patient uh, position is in uh, emergency and provide a firm platform uh, for the management of cardiopulmonary resuscitation. So uh, this board is a requirement to uh, put under the patient. Let's put it under the patient right now. Let's put it under the patient. So um, when we do uh, uh, cardiopulmonary resuscitation, we can uh, put it under the patient, put the, pa uh, put the patient completely flat uh, with the uh, chin up, and uh, this will allow us to uh, maintain the, the airway. Uh, when we uh, uh, go into management of uh, syncope and other uh, um, medical emergencies, we'll, uh, uh, we'll see how we need to uh, elevate the uh, head of the bed and everything else. So the uh, lighting system, uh, which is uh, adequate uh, to permit evaluation of patient skin, uh, mucosal colors, and uh, uh, backup lighting system is important. So we have a general light in our, in our uh, dental office, uh, but uh, this is uh, uh, not enough. Uh, uh, per uh, code, we have to have a separate backup light. Can you, yeah, okay. Uh, so, one, one, two, one, two. Yeah, we have to have a separate backup light. Uh, suction equipment, 
So Paul is demonstrating that. Uh, the, uh, the suction equipment, uh, in our office we have a separate power generator. So if the power goes down, we can run the operating room for an hour uh, at, at the very least. Uh, there are certain plugs uh, that are working in certain rooms and hallway lights that are attached to the backup batteries and generator. Uh, so that's important. If we're doing a one or two hour surgery, we don't just uh, stop doing what we're doing, uh, we can finish up uh, the procedure. So that's a requirement. Um, we have to have necessary suction equipment, uh, suction that is uh, battery or uh, 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 hand uh, driven. So there are some pumps that we can use our hand or uh, the suction uh, uh, that is uh, electric. Uh, so let's see, it's not connected uh, to the uh, power, but if uh, Paul turns it on, uh, it will work. You can hear that little noise right there. So that's an important thing. Um, we have to have an uh, oxygen delivery system, which Paul will demonstrate. Uh, and we have a central oxygen in our office, but uh, this one, uh, a lot of people just have uh, tanks, so you have to have multiple, make sure it uh, um, has a positive pressure ventilation mask uh, or AMBU bag that is connected to it. Um, AMBU bag, rebreathing bag, will allow you to deliver 100% oxygen uh, at 10 liters a minute. So, uh, and we have to deliver oxygen, uh, uh, have ability to deliver it at uh, 10 uh, uh, liters a minute. Uh, and, uh, uh, and the flow has to be at least 60 minutes. So 650 uh, liters uh, would be an e-cylinder. Uh, so we deliver it under positive pressure, either with an AMBU bag or with a, a valve mask that has positive pressure. Uh, the recovery area when we transfer the patient has to have uh, available oxygen, so the similar setup. Uh, and uh, uh, in the, uh, uh, should be suction as well, and uh, electrical outlets to connect uh, certain devices, uh, as well as the monitor. So the monitoring equipment should uh, include a vital signs monitor with the EKG, uh, pulse oximeter, um, and uh, so this is our uh, pulse uh, uh, EKG with a heart rate. So 91, it's uh, elevated. You should have heart rate at 60 now. Uh, we have a pulse oximeter, uh, which is uh, connected to her finger. It's 100. And we can see the wave right there. Blood pressure is excellent. And then uh, if we connect uh, one more thing. Uh, do, do you have a cannula? Yeah. So this is a requirement uh, for the uh, deep sedation is the CO2 monitor. This is the most accurate uh, uh, measurement of the patient breathing in and out uh, um, is the CO2 and a special cannula uh, that has a connection. Paul will attach it right now. And uh, I will go over that. Uh, okay, I, I will need Paul to help with the, uh, the rest of the list. So while he's connecting, um, obviously the uh, protocol also uh, requires us to have a good uh, history, medical history uh, obtained from the patient. Uh, we have to uh, classify the patient uh, um, uh, with the ASA classification, uh, one, two, three, or four. Uh, and you can see that uh, now there's a, a capnogram uh, wave right there. So um, Ilona, can you stop breathing for a second? Just don't breathe. Let's look at the monitor again. Just don't, don't breathe. So you can see if patient doesn't breathe, you don't have that wave. So you start worrying about it and then uh, when we go for emergency protocols, we'll do this and uh, make sure she breathes, chin up, thrust, things like that. Okay, so now Okay, Paul, let, let's go for the uh, equipment now. Uh, so I'll go slow and uh, you'll uh, uh, go to the crash cart and you pull, pull that uh, equipment out and uh, sh uh, present it so uh, Igor can uh, say it. So it's called uh, uh, ancillary equipment, uh, which uh, uh, must include the following uh, well-maintained uh, uh, and good operating condition equipment. Uh, uh, so number one is laryngoscope. Uh, 
So laryngoscope is uh, something that we use uh, uh, to uh, go in the mouth and uh, elevate the base of the tongue to uh, visualize the vocal cords. Uh, it, has, uh, it has to have light, good operating light. Uh, it has to work and you have to have backup batteries or maybe even two of those. Why is it necessary to have this? As number one is uh, for the uh, airway obstruction if we have a foreign body that we want to look at and uh, retrieve and the second is for intubation. So we have to intubate the patient. Um, emergency airway equipment, uh, oral airways. Let's look at the oral airway. Yeah, so this is the oral, oral airway. Uh, there are certain way uh, we measure it um, uh, from the uh, uh, ailer to the, uh, uh, to the uh, tragus and uh, uh, that will uh, allow us to select it for uh, adult pediatric patient uh, um, uh, or a teenager. Um, then we have uh, uh, nasal airway as well. Nasal airway is uh, frequently placed uh, in, the, in, in the nose. Uh, we lubricate it and put it in the nose so we can deliver oxygen uh, for that because that's a lot of times a, a, a place of, obstru of obstruction. Um, the next would be uh, emergency airway. Okay, so let's uh, before emergency, right, let's do endotracheal tubes. Yeah, so we have uh, endotracheal tubes, which would be a, a LMA, laryngeal mask airway, uh, that uh, sits uh, supraglottically, and uh, endotracheal tube that passes the vocal cords. So let's show the uh, endotracheal tube, uh, Paul. So this is the uh, suction device for the trachea if you have to do tracheal lavage, and. Uh, and the tracheal tube is no, no. That's that's going to be your next one. It's one of one of those tubes. So these are the pediatric one right there. Mm -hmm. Here. So uh, uh, there will be some small ones for children if you do pediatric anesthesia, uh, and uh, the big ones uh, for adults. And they usually come to 8.5 uh, 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 French size. Uh, then we have a blood pressure. Uh, and stethoscope uh, equipment. Um, did we bring stethoscope? Or no? Uh, can you show the precordial stethoscope? So stethoscope is the equipment for auscultation. Uh, right now there are a lot of Bluetooth devices that you can use, uh, and uh, yeah, okay. So so there's a there's a piece that goes on the. Uh, that goes on the uh, larynx, and we can uh, hear the uh, the noises. Um, and uh, can you show the trach uh, emergency airway? So next uh, one would be emergency airway. Uh, yeah. So this is the trach. It contains the. It's a setup. Contains the uh, uh, cricho uh, th th thyroid and adductomy kit, uh, which will be a blade and uh, the the tube uh, trans. Uh, uh, tracheal intubation, uh, uh, ventilation. Um, and then uh, is there a McGill forcep there, the forcep uh, to uh, advance the tube? So this stuff obviously is rarely used uh, uh, because we don't have uh, emergencies every day, but it's uh, necessary equipment to have. It's a, it's a must have in your crash car. And this is the McGill forcep uh, uh, to help uh, to guide the uh, in the tracheal tube uh, in the, in, into the vocal cords. Then uh, obviously the uh, suctioning devices, uh, the uh, tonsil and pharyngeal type of suction uh, is important. So we have a, a, a tonsil suction right there. Um, and then uh, we have that little catheter that you showed was the tra in, uh, tracheal uh, suctioning device, the long one right there. You can suction the stomach or uh, actually in the tracheal tube you can also use it uh, uh, for delivery of some anesthetic drugs uh, for the endotracheal tube. Um, so we have electrocardioscope, obviously, that uh, measures everything here. And then we have the uh, defibrillator uh, for um, uh, emergencies like uh, ventricular tachycardia and ventricular fibrillation. Uh, we have to have adequate equipment uh, to uh, establish the uh, airway and intravenous infusion. Obviously, the uh, the bags uh, uh, with the IV fluids and uh, uh, IV uh, cannulas. 
pulse oximeter that we talked about, uh, capnograph uh, we talked about, uh, and the precordial uh, stethoscope uh, that we talked about, and uh, obviously the records. So uh, all the adequate medical history and physical evaluation records uh, should be uh, uh, present. The American Society of Anesthesiology uh, classification, uh, class one being the healthiest patient, class four being the morbid uh, uh, patient that is uh, uh, ready to die. Uh, general anesthesia, uh, conscious sedation record uh, should include a, a time-oriented record with a preoperative uh, uh, multiple intraoperative pulse oximetry every five minutes uh, and the postoperative every 15 minutes. The blood pressure we take every five minutes. It's non-invasive blood pressure uh, and uh, we record the amount of medications we give. Uh, uh, we have all those records uh, here if, uh, after uh, this uh, session. We, we want to see them. We'll show it to you. Uh, so the drugs. Obviously, a written consent form from the patient for anesthesia is separate from the treatment consent form that we get. We have two of those. For like, let's say we're doing wisdom teeth extraction, we'll get a consent form for that, for that and we'll get a separate consent form for the anesthesia. Um, so the uh, emergency drugs. Emergency drugs uh, will include uh, uh, epinephrine, uh, vasopressor, um, other than uh, epinephrine, uh, uh, bronchodilator. I'll just go over them, uh, Paul, and then when we do the, uh, because we have to do 13 emergencies, we'll run for protocols. Um, and that's why I brought the guys so they can uh, do the, uh, run the emergencies and I'll be just uh, guiding them uh, through them. And uh, we'll see, uh, every emergency will end up with, uh, uh, with a code and uh, uh, going to uh, uh, call 911 and uh, activate EMS system. Uh, but certain uh, patients obviously will recover. Not everyone will uh, have to uh, go for that, but we'll uh, take, let's say, cardiac arrest, uh, uh, let's say chest pain to cardiac arrest and uh, subsequently transfer to the hospital. Uh, so we have uh, the third drug we have to have are some bronchodilators, uh, and then muscle relaxants, uh, we'll go for those, intravenous uh, medication for uh, treatment of cardiopulmonary arrest. Um, uh, this is not required for car cardiac uh, conscious sedation, but uh, I think, you know, conscious sedation can turn into more general uh, if uh, we use uh, more drugs. Uh, appropriate uh, drug ant uh, antagonists, uh, because there are certain drugs that we give IV, we can uh, reverse them. Uh, some drugs we can, but uh, certain we'll, we can, and we'll go, uh, go over this. Mm. Uh, Antihistaminic drugs, uh, uh, which uh, will help us with the uh, rashes and other things uh, like um, dexamethasone and uh, diphenhydramine, uh, anticholinergic drugs uh, uh, and antiarrhythmic drugs, coronary artery vasodilators, uh, antihypertensive drugs, anticonvulsants, oxygen obviously is number one emergency medication and uh, some medications to uh, treat uh, hyperglycemia like 50% dextrose. Um, so then that's uh, what we have. And I checked our crash cart, uh, uh, and we do check it all the time. We have a, a, a list of things, uh, um, a special list that we um, check the drugs expiration because they expire all the time, so you kind of have to keep up. So it's uh, probably the most expensive thing out of the whole office is to maintain this cart. And uh, Paul, just uh, open up some trays just to show how it's set up before we uh, go into um, it's set up uh, with the mm, with those little trays. Uh, it, uh, deliver one tray from there. Mm -hmm. And wh what's the name of the tray? Tachycardia. Uh, tachycardia. Okay, so we have a tachycardia tray. So one of the medical emergencies would be tachycardia. So once the emergency hits and something happens, you don't want to think twice. You don't want to remember which drug to use. Uh, uh, so we just go in there and we say, okay, it's tachycardia. Bring me tachycardia tray. And uh, the tachycardia tray comes. Um, obviously, with the whole crash cart, and then we can uh, uh, we can um, uh, use uh, the medications uh, as we need. Um, so simulated emergencies. So today we're going to uh, go through uh, 13 of those, uh, and that's the goal of the today's meeting: is to uh, recognize uh, and uh, learn how to manage 13 uh, medical, uh, dental, anesthetic emergencies. Uh, first one would be airway obstruction. Uh, second one would be bronchospasm.
Mic check, mic check, mic check. Mic check. Okay. Uh, then we have uh, my card in. Um, myocardial infarction, uh, hypertension, cardiac arrest, uh, allergic reactions, uh, uh, seizures, convulsions, uh, hypoglycemia, syncope, and respiratory depression. Okay, so this is the. Um, This is what we're gonna do. So, uh, eager. So the, the um, so th this is well seen, right? So is there is there a little delay in the uh, in the image or no? W one second. It's online. Okay. Uh, it it has to be here, or it can go on this on that screen there. The video. Well, I was thinking uh, to put the presentation on the, um, right there on that screen right here, and then put the, your video on that, uh, on that TV and then turn the TV towards the audience. Presentation on the big screen and then your, ca your camera on the, on, the, on the TV. Oh, both? Oh, oh okay. Okay, and then presentation can also stay there, right? On that one. Okay, so. Okay, so obviously it's not a perfect setup here, but at least it gives an idea. So it's not just a blunt uh, presentation because I know it's very, very boring to just to hear numbers and hey, you know, we're gonna push 300 milligrams of uh, amiodarone. So if you don't see it, it's, uh, you know, I usually sleep on those lectures. So uh, I knew it's, uh, it's, uh, that doesn't make sense just to talk. Uh, that's why we try to do a little setup. So it uh, simulates uh, what we do in the office. Obviously it's not perfect. You know, I even brought the uh, oral surgery cassette uh, but you know, like I'm not gonna open it uh, here, so we'll just uh, kind of uh, uh, show. But uh, the, the main thing is I wanna vi have a visual effect. Uh, so if we ask for a drug, uh, Paul will uh, pull it out uh, and we'll magnify it, we'll show, we'll talk about the drug a little bit, you know, n not too much pharmacology, so we don't fall asleep here, but kind of get an idea of uh, what's, uh, what's important, okay? Um, again, I'm sorry, like I, I was, uh, doing my presentation for, but it, di it didn't save on that uh, drive, so uh, so we'll go through um, this. So can we, can we do presentation and, uh, uh, and that image here? So you're gonna, no, both. Can you do both of them on the same screen? Okay. Huh? Okay, you, you, you will mix. Um, because I need my presentation, so. I'll, uh, let's uh, keep the presentation on, on this one then, okay? Uh, this will be there, okay. Do, do we have a clicker so I can click? This is the clicker for, for that thing, okay. Yeah, I, I can't see anything there, so. Okay, show me on this one. And and the camera, can you sh can you show? Can you connect camera to this, and then we'll just keep the presentation there? No, you can't. Okay. All right. So um, 
So Nadia will help me. Uh, we'll go through the uh, couple of scenarios now. So I wish this TV was here so we can see it. Or um, well, let's do this. Uh, we'll. Uh, I'll just. I'll just turn this. Uh, this thing. This way. This way I can see it. It's. A, it's okay, Michelle. I will. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, no, it's yeah because I I, I can see it, so I'll uh, I'll just open up here. Hmm? No, we're not gonna put IB here. No. <laughs> well, Elona is an aspiring medical student. She uh, uh, she uh, she's seventeen now, eighteen, and she's already a second year of college. She wants to be a medical doctor. Did you did you did you go to emergency room uh, rotations yet? Or no, 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 not yet. Okay, you will. Your heart rate is one twenty two. You see. <laughs> okay, so we'll do this. I will. Okay. So airway obstruction. So I'll be uh, I'll be showing you my back to you guys. Okay, sorry for that. So I'll be just using this because I want to be accurate. Uh, it's a good training. It's even good training for my staff because uh, you know we kind of have to uh, see and then uh, either you know I need doctors with the staff. It will be helpful for them too. Um, so we have all the ASA American Society of Anesthesiology monitors, including the capnogram and. Uh, uh, usually IV, we started the, in the uh, antecubital fossa. So my favorite uh, spot is the right uh, hand right here. Sometimes we're in the leg. Uh, patient is uh, comfortably covered. Uh, we uh, prep the face. Uh, patient had breathing oxygen, and uh, uh, patient is uh, uh, healthy. Healthy 17-year-old uh, presents to the... Uh, uh, I will just put in everything on myself. Uh, uh, so presents for the oral surgery, um, ex uh, routine extraction of wisdom teeth. So we are working with Alona, and she's doing fine. And uh, uh, suddenly, uh, uh, something uh, happens, and uh, uh, she uh, is not uh, uh, responsive to uh, uh, verbal command. Okay, so she's not responsive to verbal command. Uh, she uh, uh, suddenly is breathing, so we can see that uh, her capnogram goes off. Uh, oxygen uh, uh, saturation um, uh, goes down. Uh, and uh, uh, does the, does this have a, a light? This uh, this thing right here? No. Oh, here. Okay. Yeah. So uh, okay. So this is the capnogram again. This is the EKG. Uh, and this is the pulse oximeter right there. And uh, this is our blood pressure. Uh, and uh, so we monitor those. So if we don't have capnogram, uh, most uh, uh, ac accurate assessment of the airway obviously would be a recordial stethoscope that goes right here, the little uh, stethoscope, and then it goes in my ear and I hear uh, the, uh, the strider or uh, normal breathing or coughing, and then uh, we have the uh, oxygenation right there, which is the pulse oximeter. Uh, so pulse oximeter is, uh, uh, has a delay of about 30 seconds. Uh, that's why it's considered not the most accurate thing, but it gives us an idea. It's good for conscious sedation. So uh, let's go for this scenario. So uh, Ilona stop, uh, stops uh, breathing, and uh, can you breathe with your stomach uh, for a second, just with a stomach like this, and then stop? So if we see this, uh, it's not a cessation of breathing, uh, but if a patient does like this uh, with the diaphragm, it's called paradoxical breathing. So the muscles are working, but uh, something is obstructing the airway and uh, the patient uh, cannot breathe. So obviously the first thing we do uh, would be uh, repositioning the head. Uh, so Nadia will demonstrate it. And usually patients are a little bit more supine like this. Uh, so she would reposition the, uh, the head. Uh, uh, we will stop the procedure. There's a bite block uh, in, in her mouth. Uh, so she will open her mouth real wide 
and uh, we will examine the airway. And then she says, uh, Dr. Antipo, I see the tooth there on the, uh, 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 right on her tongue. It fell from your forcep uh, in the throat. Uh, and the uh, OG, and uh, then she tries to suction it out, and uh, it goes down. Okay, so it goes down. So we have decreased saturation uh, readings now, and it's uh, coming to 80. Uh, so what do we do? So we're going to check the airway patency. So we're going to reposition. We, we, uh, if it's a witnessed uh, foreign body uh, going in the, in the uh, throat, it can be crown or tooth, uh, then uh, we know it. Uh, if it's witnessed, and we know, then uh, it could be just the uh, airway issue, uh, uh, just an airway obstruction. Um, if it's a foreign body, we want to um, uh, uh, consider removing this uh, uh, foreign body uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, doing the uh, abdominal thrust. So we'll uh, press right there and see if it comes out. Uh, if the patient's supine, uh, so, uh, sometimes you can uh, turn the, uh, uh, the patient and uh, uh, see if they can spit it. But if the patient is unconscious, let's say we did deep sedation, uh, we have to... Uh, uh, the only thing we can do is abdominal uh, thrust uh, and uh, see if it uh, will come out. Um, uh, so we'll uh, continue. We'll suction the airway. Uh, so uh, Nadia, Nadia and me will be suctioning the airway. Uh, we'll be uh, um, ventilating the patient if she stops breathing. Let's say she stopped breathing, so we have to ventilate. Yes. Yeah, you just uh, push on the diaphragm as hard as you can this way. Two hands or one hand. Um, and we'll, we'll, we can practice on those. Uh, there's Preston uh, little and Preston big. Uh, so with the... We'll, um, so we'll, su we'll su su uh, consider suction, finger sweep. So we'll, we'll all remember finger sweep. And th that's the first thing we do if it's uh, inside the airway and you do blind, blind finger sweep. Uh, the, if you see the foreign body and you do finger sweep, it's different from uh, just the blind finger sweep because you can push it even further. So it's not recommended. So what, what do we do? I'll ask Paul, uh, bring me the, uh, uh, the uh, stethoscope. So I'm going to, you know, it has a light, so I'll... I'll go in there and uh, I'll take the McGill forcep or there is a Russian forcep, a surgical forcep, and I will uh, uh, go with this and try to remo remove it. Uh, once it happened to me uh, about uh, nine years ago and the uh, assistant pushed the tooth uh, inside the throat and uh, thanks God uh, um, I was able to, I, I had this device so we pulled it. Uh, actually, um, I think I, I had that device as a backup but I, I used a, a tongue retractor, the sweetheart, and we pu pulled it out. I had a headlight so I could see it. It was right on the top of the epiglottis. So we used the suction and we picked it up. And, uh, you know, I was very happy for the rest of the day. Because if it will go down, obviously it's a problem. Another thing that happened to me is a uh, patient had a, a tongue piercing. And uh, uh, the little round thing, they couldn't remove it. It obviously uh, uh, did go down. And uh, we didn't know where it goes. It can go in airway. So you have to order chest x-ray after this. Uh, uh, so... Now, so this emergency uh, uh, doesn't stay here, so it uh, goes in, uh, into uh, uh, strider, patient cannot breathe, uh, so we try to ventilate, we can't uh, ventilate. Uh, so the first thing, if, we, if patient can breathe, we do positive uh, pressure ventilation. So we use a, um, let's use one of those uh, masks right there. And usually, uh, it can be one person job, it can be two, uh, two people job. Um, and uh, if uh, the positive vent ventilation uh, f fails, you, you, don't, you don't need oxygen. Yeah, you can just, uh, yeah, you, you just need to show. So, so we'll put the mask on and uh, we want to do the C clamp on the mask and uh, then we'll, we'll do vent uh, ventilation. Okay, so. Uh, we, and we can practice again uh, later on the uh, Preston uh, from Amazon. Um, so let's say we have a, a vocal cord spasm. Um, it's called laryngospasm. Uh, uh, if we have a laryngospasm, we can again try the positive uh, uh, pressure ventilation. If it doesn't work, what do you do? The next uh, thing uh, per protocol would be using uh, 
uh, muscle relaxant, uh, succinylcholine. Uh, it's usually stored uh, not in this emergency cart, um, uh, I, so I can't show you. It's usually in the freezer. So we have a special medical drugs fridge that is, uh, uh, that is in the office uh, next to the, uh, around the operating rooms there, and uh, we go and get that. Uh, so that's uh, one of the medications that has to be in the, in the fridge. Everything else can be room temperature. So we give uh, uh, about 10 or 20 uh, uh, milligrams of succinylcholine. It's uh, 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 depolarizing uh, um, an, uh, uh, muscle relaxant. And then uh, uh, if, we, uh, if, we, uh, if that doesn't work or if it's, if it's contraindicated to the patient, we can use rocuronium, uh, approximately uh, 0.3 milligrams per kilogram. Uh, so about 80 uh, milligrams we, we would give. Uh, now we'll continue to ventilate the patient, and uh, obviously if we're struggling, uh, I, I would uh, call right, uh, right away EMS, so we're going to activate the code. Uh, so Yun is going to call 911 uh, uh, in this scenario, uh, and she'll confirm that she did. Yeah, so she did. Then we activate the EMS. So, as soon as you activate the EMS, so far, so far we try to manage emergency on our own, but as soon as we... Uh, activate it, uh, we have to record, start recording. And there is a special uh, paper we'll show you uh, uh, on, uh, on, on here, and uh, we have to put a time and uh, certain other things uh, uh, to uh, record in which drugs we're going to give. So we're going to uh, put what time we activated, what, when, when we called the emergency room, uh, uh, because there are two ways. You can call EMS and call emergency room, or they call emergency room, but uh, you have to activate the EMS system, 911. Um, so now, um, so we, uh, we can't ventilate uh, the patient uh, and we need to deliver oxygen. And uh, so therefore, we have a choice of uh, uh, some uh, uh, devices, which would be a nasal airway. So we'll start with nasal airway. We'll put the oral airway um, and uh, sh show those again one more time. So uh, oral airway uh, will we'll go in there. They will help us to deliver the mask oxygenation and then nasal we'll put right in the nose, we'll lube it uh, with a lubricant, uh, water-based lubricant, and put it in there, and then try to ventilate. If, we're, if we can't ventilate, uh, we're going to try to do LMA, which is laryng laryngeal mask airway, uh, which is like this, and there are different sizes, uh, small pediatric ones, adults, uh, so that will be a large male, probably very large male, and uh, number five, and we have a smaller one, so that would be probably for... Uh, about 30, 50 kilograms. So are you 50 kilograms? No? Less? Less. Okay, so 30 to 50, that will be her size right there. Uh, and then uh, she's probably about 6 uh, millimeter uh, uh, endotracheal tube, so if we can't do that, uh, we're going to intubate, and we'll use uh, this McGill's suction airway and uh, intubate. If you can't intubate, uh, the next thing is uh, uh, Kriker uh, thyroidotomy, uh, or transtracheal intubation. And uh, this kit that we have, um, yeah, right there. So it has a blade and it has uh, all the necessary uh, equipment, uh, the pilot. Uh, so we'll uh, cut in, in between the uh, thyroid uh, uh, cartilage and cricoid uh, cartilage right here. And uh, we'll uh, make a small incision to the muscle spread uh, into the trachea put that thing in there and uh, connect the uh, oxygen uh, so it's all uh, uh, same connections and then uh, put it around the neck and uh, try to ventilate it this way. Uh, then EMS has arrived and uh, she's trans uh, transferred to the hospital and she survived. So a uh, next scenario, um, in the dental office uh, uh, usually in the now we use uh, on a routine basis uh, very few medications that we uh, inject patient with or give to the patient. Uh, ether based anesthetics uh, uh, that we use, uh, benzocaine topical, um, uh, but we don't use uh, um, anything uh, injectable on ether based. So it's all amides uh, like lidocaine and uh, other medications. And uh, uh, so let's say uh, you have a patient that comes in, a uh, young girl. And uh, you give her some uh, local anesthetic, and all of a sudden, uh, oh, you give her amoxicillin pill because uh, uh, she uh, she has infection. She has infection, uh, and uh, she gets a rash, and she says it's difficult for me to breathe. 
uh, and uh, she uh, getting a little nauseous, uh, and uh, uh, her li lip uh, starts swelling. Uh, so what do we do? Uh, so we have to recognize that it is a possibility of the allergic reaction. Uh, we have to monitor the patient. So we have to put the patient in the monitor and make sure we have vital signs. So some kind of monitor we have to have uh, if we administer those medications. Uh, we place the patient in a comfortable position, supine. Uh, we do, um, uh, uh, if, uh, if the patient is uh, unconscious, obviously they're, 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 they're already flat. Uh, we're going to do uh, monitor blood pressure uh, every uh, five minutes at least. Uh, we're going to put a pulse oximeter, so uh, we have to have some kind of pulse oximeter. And there are, right now, there are very uh, inexpensive ones that you can just put on the finger and just uh, measure the, uh, the oxygenation. And obviously, you have to have an oxygen in your office, uh, and uh, we monitor the uh, heart rate. So if, you, if, she, if she has a, sw a swollen lip, obviously, you just you activate the code, 911, right away. You don't want to wait because that can go quickly, and it can uh, pr uh, progress into the anaphylaxis. Uh, so the, uh, the next thing uh, we do is uh, uh, we have a slowly progressing uh, cutaneous reaction uh, or we have a full-blown anaphylaxis. So most of our patients get a little red, you know, they, they have uh, 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 spots, uh, maybe a little uh, tingling in the, in the lips, um, uh, maybe a little wheezing. So we can uh, administer uh, a Benadryl. Uh, we can give it IM or IV. If you have an IV, you give it IV. If you have IM, you can uh, give IM. 50 milligrams, uh, uh, either or, uh, IM or um, uh, IV route, and uh, uh, and consider referral. So uh, this way, you can actually call uh, the emergency room and say, "Hey, you know, I have a patient that is uh, kind of like this. I'm observing. Uh, the, uh, she's fine. She's breathing. You know, she, her lips are not swollen. She's not going into anaphylaxis, but she may. Can I send her for observation?" And then uh, you, you choose the, uh, uh, the transportation. You know, it can be uh, EMS people or it can be yourself driving them there. You know, it's probably uh, most people won't do. They'll just uh, do EMS. Now, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting, but even uh, if you go to Kaiser for, to check blood pressure and your blood pressure is uh, uh, 140 over 130, uh, 200, uh, 220 over 140, they're not going to walk you to emergency room across the room. They'll, they'll have to call EMS, so they don't, they don't walk the patient. They call EMS, the team comes, you know, they pay them uh, $1,500 to transport the patient next door. That's how it's done. It's, it's, uh, it's crazy, but um, that's what it is. But there is a reason for that, because they could do it uh, uh, otherwise. They, they could have their own team. But um, So anaphylaxis. So anaphylaxis, uh, the drugs of choice, uh, of course, would be uh, the epinephrine, uh, that's uh, number one. Uh, epinephrine can be given uh, subcutaneous, uh, which we give uh, uh, one milliliter um, uh, subcutaneously, uh, and, uh, or we can give uh, uh, IV. Uh, uh, subcutaneous, it's uh, one to uh, 1,000 uh, concentration, uh, and uh, IV, one to 10,000, uh, slow push. Um, and uh, Obviously, we can administer uh, uh, Benadryl uh, and IV fluids. Uh, then uh, we, we should consider corticosteroids, uh, and, uh, and the patient uh, uh, responded uh, well to epinephrine. Uh, she is uh, breathing, and uh, we called 911. They took her for observation to the hospital. Um, sometimes people come and they say, I'm allergic to everything. Uh, uh, my, my, uh, I, you know, I had uh, all those anesthetics they gave me, and uh, I get rash. Uh, how do you treat this patient? Uh, if uh, that's the case, they have a pan, a pan allergy to the local anesthetics, and uh, which is documented uh, by uh, uh, their allergologist. You can take them to the hospital and do uh, uh, anesthesia with a gas. Uh, with a, you can also use Benadryl as an injectable. Uh, because it will numb them up a little bit, uh, but you cannot do big surgeries on that, uh, so you have to take them to the hospital. Uh, if, you, if you do not believe them, they'll just say they're allergic, uh, uh, but they're not. Uh, we just give them uh, four carpules of different medications, tell them, okay, go across the street. We have uh, here in the plaza a very good allergologist. So uh, do, do the testing, bring report, 
if you're allergic, you know, we'll use the drug that we, uh, uh, we, we can use. Okay, so uh, let's say Ilona had a very good life and she's uh, 90 years old now and uh, her wisdom teeth are out and she has uh, no teeth at all and she comes to place uh, two implants for her denture. She comes in, uh, we uh, give her local anesthetic and then uh, uh, all of a sudden she uh, feels uh, uh, some uh, pain in her right arm, it radiates to her jaw, the tightness in her uh, chest and uh, you know she's uh, still conscious and uh, we talk to her but uh, her pain gets worse so uh, we have to recognize uh, some cardiac uh, uh, origin of this uh, as the myocardial infarction and uh, uh, it's a good uh, way to evaluate the patient beforehand obviously you know ASA class 1 and METS metabolic uh, uh, activity of the patient is can they uh, can they uh, go up uh, up the stairs uh, like one or two flights without losing breath, can they walk a mile, all those things, uh, uh, exercise tolerance is very, very important because sometimes people go upstairs and then uh, they, uh, they can um, have uh, um, uh, dyspnea and uh, uh, their pulse get elevated and uh, that's not a good patient to treat sometimes. You have to be selective. So we have to pay, put the patient in a comfortable position, uh, uh, um, uh, give a 100% Oxygen. Our number one uh, drug uh, is uh, still oxygen, uh, so we give oxygen uh, via nasal cannula because patient is still breathing on, on their own. We're going to monitor the blood pressure. We're going to put those blood pressures on the patient, uh, all the monitors, every five minutes. We're going to do continuous pulse oximetry. We're going to put the EKGs. Uh, obviously, if uh, you don't have a monitor like this, uh, and then uh, you, you start activating the code right away because that should be no delay. Uh, and that's our next uh, talk as we activating EMS. So uh, if I see the patient is doing this, uh, before I give them a nitroglycerin or uh, other drugs, aspirin to chew or morphine for pain, uh, I'll say, Eunice, uh, call 911, activate uh, the emergency system. And uh, she, she's, uh, she just called 911 and we uh, the emergency record, which is a separate paper that we'll, uh, we'll see later. Uh, so the... Uh, so initial response, uh, uh, the uh, fails to resolve. We we uh, check the uh, EKG, and then instead of a beautiful sinus rhythm, we have uh, uh, let's say ST segment uh, uh, elevation, uh, and uh, we suspect uh, MI. Uh, so obviously we already called 911. Uh, we're going to give pa patient a 0.4 milligrams nitroglycerin uh, uh, tablet, or we're going to administer nitroglycerin. Okay, so. So let's do, um, so now we're getting into drugs. So let's get uh, some uh, uh, trays here. So we're gonna get a myocardial uh, infarction uh, uh, tray. Uh, it should be, mm -hmm. right there. So that's a tray and uh, Paul, uh, I'll be uh, talking about drugs and Paul will uh, be showing it into camera so you can see. So uh, nitroglycerin spray, uh, yeah, like, like, like this, just put, take it out and then uh, Igor will zoom in, yeah. Uh, you can put all of them out and then we'll put them away. Uh, so we have uh, nitroglycerin uh, spray, uh, so we have uh, 400 micrograms uh, per spray, uh, we can do uh, uh, two uh, sprays. Uh, we can do two sprays, uh, uh, then we have aspirin, chewable aspirin, uh, it has to be special kind, uh, non-enteric non uh, non aspirin, uh, then we have nitroglycerin pills, 0.4 per pill, and then uh, we have to have some kind of pain medication, uh, because that will, that's what will aggravate the MI is the, is the, is the pain, so we'll give uh, morphine or uh, fentanyl, uh, IV, uh, or I am, um, and uh, obviously the uh, uh, the e e EMS uh, uh, arrived and they uh, uh, took her uh, for the uh, resuscitation to the hospital, and uh, she did well. So the next uh, uh, patient is uh, the patient that has a um, uh, she, she's 20 years old. She's in college. Uh, uh, I think better is okay. Yeah. 
working a little so Doran on the arrhythmia. Another arrhythmia drug is like this. We have uh, uh, find now the battery real quick. It's okay. So, so instead of the run, but um, uh, the and that's why we have uh. Always second. Doesn't jump anymore. And the, the crash card that you can, the, it's a really, really good one. Let's uh, see here. Okay, so we, uh, that's why we, this uh, one, this, this, uh, in, uh, of the two, uh, this is amiodarone, and you can get uh, three grams. Uh, I can, yeah. Maybe it's in a different channel, or? It's better now, okay. So, so um, uh, three hundred milligrams of uh, three hundred milligrams of the second channel. Okay, that works now. Uh, so amiodarone uh, and lidocaine is uh, uh, no longer considered uh, as uh, uh, first line of treatment. Uh, and, uh, also, we can use magnesium. Uh, uh, so if we have a rent uh, uh, EKG, when we have uh, like tarsadas de points where we have uh, extra wave, uh, that means the uh, the of uh, the ventricles uh, re-entry through some pathways into the artery and then repeated the uh, tarsadas de point then uh, we uh, Okay, so the next emergency uh, we're going to move in uh, uh, is a patient, a 15-year-old, uh, comes uh, uh, for simple filling, uh, had a, a history of uh, seizures. Is it working? Yeah? Kiki? No, no, this one. Microphone working? Okay, so we'll just uh, talk for this. Um, so, 
So the patient, uh, with injection, the patient is starting to have uh, some clonic uh, tonic seizures. Uh, uh, they, uh, uh, we see the convulsions, and uh, uh, we uh, have a spray of pit, uh, pit mouth seizures, seizures uh, uh, that are uh, big seizures, uh, they last long, uh, and, we have, uh, and we can have petite seizures. Uh, with the uh, end, we activate the emergency uh, uh, protocol for uh, convulsions, and uh, the treatment uh, for this would be uh, some uh, benzodiazepine medications, uh, and we uh, will start an IV uh, and uh, uh, give the patient uh, uh, either diazepam uh, or uh, midazolam medication. Midazolam, give uh, two milligrams initially, one milligram uh, uh, a minute. My check, my check, 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 check. I don't know. Check, check. I mean, it seems to work, but there's uh, some kind of delay. Okay, now it works again. Uh, so we're going to continue uh, uh, with this, uh, with the uh, management of the convulsions, and uh, we're going to give 100% uh, oxygen. Uh, we're going to reassure the patient that everything is fine. Uh, we're going to continue uh, with the treatment based on the patient history. Uh, and uh, we're going to monitor the patient. Uh, uh, for continuous seizures, we have to stop uh, and uh, we have to activate EMS if it doesn't stop uh, because it's damaging and uh, can go into grand mal seizures. So we stop uh, the emergency, uh, the treatment, uh, uh, activate EMS and uh, uh, continue to administer anti uh, con uh, con convulsants as we uh, talked about. Uh, so the um, uh, next thing ha that happens to this patient, uh, uh, they uh, uh, they uh, uh, start vomiting, and uh, uh, we give them a little bit of sedation with midazolam, and they start vomiting, and uh, uh, they vomit, and uh, uh, the the vomit uh, 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 does. Uh, uh, continues for about five, 10 seconds, and uh, uh, then we have a pulse oximeter that goes uh, to uh, 70 and uh, continue, continue to drop. A patient is agitated, they start to wheeze, so we, uh, we uh, suspect uh, uh, aspiration of the vomit. Uh, so what do we do now? Uh, we, uh, uh, obviously we see patient vomiting, we wanna uh, turn uh, to the right, right away, not to the left, but to the right. Uh, towards you if you're, uh, if you're right-handed operator and uh, let the vomit go down uh, to the right because we have the uh, right bronchus that is straighter than the left so we don't want to turn to the left so it doesn't go into the lungs and then the patient vomits uh, uh, if you have a basket you put it if you don't you, you don't and then you uh, put the patient on the uh, monitors uh, oxygen 100 percent let's go back uh, and then uh, we uh, ob obviously uh, suction the patient uh, and uh, uh, if you're if you uh, 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 think that there's uh, some vomit you can use that small catheter go uh, a little bit in the in the tracheal pass passing the vocal cords uh, some advanced operators consider lavage about 10 cc's of uh, normal saline lavage the trachea uh, usually that can result in laryngospasm or bronchospasm as well uh, so we're gonna mm, do the uh, so after the right decubitus position, we're going to uh, 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 remove the material, suction, 100% oxygen, vital signs, uh, auscultate the lungs. We're going to listen to the lungs uh, bilaterally, and uh, we're going to consider termination of the procedure. Uh, we listen to the lungs. There's some wheezing. Uh, we, uh, uh, we consider uh, 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 laryngoscopy uh, in the hospital uh, with, a, uh, with a lavage, chest x-ray. Uh, so EMS comes and takes the patient uh, uh, to the hospital. Uh, then uh, the, uh, the other scenario, the patient is a 50-year-old uh, uh, man uh, who comes in, he is a truck driver, uh, he is uh, always in a hurry, working hard, eats uh, a lot of uh, fast food, uh, and you take blood pressure and uh, uh, before, before procedure you're doing a crown prep, and blood pressure is uh, uh, 150 over 
85, uh, and he's uh, feeling fine. Uh, he's a little bit red, uh, but not anxious, uh, uh, not, not sweating. And the uh, patient, uh, you, you give the local anesthetic, about four carpules of the lidocaine. You're gonna do uh, bridge uh, crown prep. And the uh, patient uh, uh, becomes uh, uh, more red, the patient becomes uh, 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 slightly unresponsive, uh, uh, dizzy. Uh, so we consider uh, the uh, uh, hypertensive crisis because you do take a second blood pressure and it's uh, 220 over 120. Uh, so we're gonna put the patient in a comfortable position, uh, the management of this, remove materials from the mouth. If we start a little surgery or doing crown preps, we're gonna stop, pack, 100% uh, oxygen, uh, monitor blood pressure, and uh, continuous pulse oximetry. Obviously, if uh, we can't do anything from now, we don't, uh, we don't have any medications in the office that uh, you know how to give, then uh, you just activate the emergency system, uh, take the patient to the hospital. Uh, if, uh, if we do want to manage it, uh, start managing it at, uh, uh, on the table, uh, which a lot of times uh, we do. Uh, we, uh, if the patient is conscious, we'll give them uh, 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 medications. Uh, we'll uh, give clonidin. Uh, uh, we don't have clonidin, okay. Uh, we'll give clonidin medication orally. Uh, sometimes we can uh, give triglycerin, uh, a couple of puffs under the tongue. Uh, but uh, that can also result in a, a, a blood, blood pressure drop. Uh, let's say if we have established IV uh, or we uh, do establish IV, we're gonna uh, manage it with a, uh, a labetalol, uh, five milligrams, uh, uh, IV push. Uh, uh, if it doesn't respond, we're gonna give another, another five. Uh, labetalol is the first uh, drug of uh, choice. If we have uh, uh, a bradycardia, uh, we'll give uh, esmolol uh, and uh, uh, the blood pressure uh, goes down a little bit uh, uh, and uh, uh, the other medication we can use is hydralazine. So and we managed that successfully, we finished the crown preps, uh, took the tooth out and the uh, 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 patient uh, uh, did well, we uh, contacted the uh, uh, the physician of the patient that gave us recommendations uh, and prescribed some uh, metoprolol 50 milligrams uh, pills uh, for him uh, for, uh, to take uh, orally once a day, extended release. Uh, so then, uh, uh, so the same patient, uh, uh, after the crown preps, uh, uh, we try to sit, sit him up and uh, he becomes dizzy and uh, 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 there is sweating uh, uh, and uh, he didn't tell us that he was uh, insulin dependent, uh, uh, so we suspect uh, the next emergency, which is hypoglycemia. Uh, so once we suspected that, everything starts with the same thing, vital signs, uh, every five minutes, blood pressure, pulse oximeter, heart rate, uh, measure blood glucose. Uh, if we have a glucometer, uh, which we do, uh, then we uh, do measure the uh, um, uh, blood glucose. Um, then we will do, uh, uh, the patient assessment, uh, if they uh, uh, become uh, unconscious, uh, we have to start an IV, uh, or if they're conscious, we can give them uh, uh, the, the rescue sugar. Um, uh, if, uh, if they unconscious, we start an IV. Uh, even they're conscious, it's easier to give IV. We give 50% dextrose uh, over a period of time. Uh, we also can give glucagon. Uh, it will uh, uh, help. So we have this insta-glucose uh, that we can use orally. And uh, we have 50% uh, uh, dextrose right there. So these are the two emergency medication for that. Uh, so we're gonna monitor blood glucose, uh, uh, activate uh, EMS uh, if patient is unconscious and uh, if the con conscious is, is not re restored. Uh, so, uh, we gave all those drugs uh, to the patient. Uh, we've been treating him for hypertensive crisis and uh, uh, now we uh, gave him uh, 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 all those uh, 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 dextrose and uh, antihypertensive drugs and all of a sudden his blood pressure is uh, uh, 60 over 30. So the other, uh, that brings us to another emergency which is the hypertension. Uh, with the hypertension, 
emergency. We're gonna uh, again pati put patient in a supine position. Uh, we're gonna take uh, uh, blood pressure. Uh, so patient considered being hypotensive if their blood pressure is uh, 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 two thirds of their normal uh, blood pressure. And we see the uh, symptoms of hyperperfusion, confusion. Uh, uh, patient is uh, 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 sweaty. Uh, uh, the initial response uh, uh, we we see uh, will be based on the again symptoms, uh, uh, like the if it's a postural uh, change or uh, some kind of anxiety, or we know there's some underlying cardiovascular disease, or uh, uh, if we have an IV for hypertension, uh, what we normally give is uh, we give uh, 500 uh, milligrams of uh, normal saline fluid bolus, or uh, followed by another 500. Uh, we, uh, uh, and then if that uh, doesn't resp uh, respond, uh, we, we can have a patient with uh, hyperperfusing, so we have to give them something. Obviously, we call EMS, activate the code at this point, uh, do it early, and then we, uh, uh, we would uh, give the patient uh, the pressors. So there's some medications that uh, uh, help us to uh, restore the blood pressure. Uh, we have uh, ephedrine a medication that uh, Paul going to find. Uh, in the hypertension, uh, and we're going to find uh, uh, phenylephrine medication. Uh, uh, ephedrine, uh, 5 to 10 uh, uh, milligrams uh, every 5 minutes, and phenylephrine, 0.1 milligrams uh, every 5 minutes. Uh, they're all uh, uh, drugs that we have to dilute. Uh, uh, so ephedrine, we take uh, uh, this, and we dilute it in uh, 9 milligrams of normal saline. And this one would dub double dilute. We take this uh, and nine, uh, then we discard nine, and then we dilute again. So it's double dilution. So that it's a very small concentration uh, in the mm, phenylephrine medication. Uh, and uh, we uh, hopefully uh, restore the blood pressure, and the uh, patient uh, uh, goes home. If uh, uh, let's say we didn't restore the blood pressure, and the same patient uh, now uh, uh, had a convulsion, and we uh, gave, gave them uh, uh, midazolam, so we have a good blood pressure uh, uh, so far, uh, but a patient, a patient uh, 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 kind of uh, stopped breathing in us. So we have oxygenation that is not 100, it's 80, it continues to drop again, uh, the uh, lower respiration rate, uh, and uh, the car uh, carbon dioxide here uh, starting to be uh, 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 look different, like we lose a wave. Uh, it, uh, it goes up, uh, so uh, what do we do? Uh, we, uh, uh, obviously at this point it's okay to activate the EMS, uh, or you uh, uh, just think about the patient may be over sedated because we ga uh, he, he is uh, older and we gave him uh, uh, some, uh, a, a lot of midazolam to, uh, to fight his uh, convulsions. Uh, so we're gonna, uh, obviously ma manage the airway, uh, chin lift, uh, uh, a mask, uh, uh, nasal airway, oral airway, uh, tongue protraction, uh, give 100% oxygen, uh, and consider uh, emer emergency and medical systems. Uh, so, uh, we even have oxygen in our, in our um, uh, x-ray room, um, which we have a CT scan in, because we had a few uh, patients that uh, collapsed there, you know, after some uh, uh, surgeries, and mostly it's uh, younger, uh, younger adults. Um, they see the blood, and then they, um, uh, they can have a syncope episode. So the next uh, uh, episode we're going to describe is the, uh, when somebody, uh, somebody loses the conscious. Uh, so they are unresponsive. Uh, we're going to place the patient again in the supine position, uh, uh, head tilt, chin lift, uh, 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 assess ABCs, check for pulse, uh, and uh, we're going to administer 100% oxygen, uh, uh, and uh, uh, we're going to check uh, for pulse because we want to rule out the cardiac arrest, uh, and patient uh, start an IV, give some fluids, uh, patient returns to consciousness, and we treated the syncope this way. Uh, so that's uh, pretty much uh, it. Uh, pretty much it. So we can, uh, we uh, talked about 13 emergencies now. And uh, any questions on the drugs? Uh, obviously then, 
Uh, if, if you do get some uh, something like this, uh, and uh, from our experience, uh, the most common is over sedation, obviously, you know, and, and it's uh, very hard to, uh, uh, to rule it out because there are some patients who uh, do smoke different things now, you know, they vape, uh, they, uh, uh, they anxious, they take medications uh, uh, like uh, Norco's and they won't tell you that they did it and then they give them sedation and they stop breathing on you. And then even then they didn't tell you that they took something. Uh, so some weird things happen. So uh, pretty much airway management is the most important thing. Um, uh, cardiac uh, 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 issues are rare on the uh, healthy uh, young patients, but uh, airway is uh, probably the most important. So airway measurement is huge. Um, any questions uh, on the on the protocols or? medications <laughs> yes 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 she is excellent but she's <laughs> she's still alive yeah. <laughs> she's still alive so again this is the f first time we're doing it uh, you know like this with a chair and everything so uh um, I wish my presentation, I had some nice videos when people collapse, you know, and then uh, uh, when we roll out the patients out, you know, but maybe next time we'll, uh, uh, we'll do, bec uh, because we want, we want to talk about medically compromised patient at some point. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, review this uh, patient with diabetes and how to manage them uh, so we can, uh, we can do that next time. So uh, th th thank you all our assistants for helping out. Yeah, yeah question, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, propofol, uh, um, I would say uh, we use it uh, once a day for sure, once a day. Um, uh, we do, it's a general anesthetic, uh, so um, combined with other drugs. Our a normal uh, sedation uh, route would be obviously IV, uh, we would give uh, five milligrams of midazolam, uh, uh, 25 uh, micrograms of fentanyl, and then uh, 12.5 to uh, 100 of uh, ketamine, and then followed by propofol. Uh, it just depends. If it's a longer procedure, we can uh, uh, do m like more continuous propofol drip, uh, uh, or if it's a wisdom tooth, very anxious patient, uh, uh, similar. Uh, but to tell the truth, like especially like with the implants and uh, lots of irrigation, um, you know the uh, less, uh, the deeper, uh, the lighter the level, the easier it is. Uh, yeah, especially if you want to get out of the anesthesia quickly. So the so the setup is important, and the crash cart. Uh, this is a very good one uh, here if uh, somebody's uh, you know doing uh, uh, oral sedation or IV uh, sedation, uh, conscious sedation, this is a good thing to have uh, for, uh, it has uh, everything in it, including the uh, intubation equipment. Um, and if you guys want to look into that, uh, all the drugs, all of them. Uh, oh, uh, one, one more thing we didn't talk about is the reversal. So uh, uh, the patient, uh, uh, during those scenarios, they received the drugs we just talked about. And there are uh, two drugs we can reverse with those. Uh, we can reverse uh, uh, midazolam with the reversal of flumazenil, and we can reverse uh, fentanyl with an Narcan. Th these are the only two reversals. And then uh, mm, some uh, muscle relaxants uh, can be reversed as well, like succinylcholine uh, and uh, rocuronium. No. I, I, in the, the, the sucks in the fridge, so we didn't bring it here. Uh, but I anybody is interested to like look uh, how we do sedations in the office, you're more than welcome uh, to come to our office any day and uh, spend the day, uh, spend a couple hours. You know, we do sedations every day. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I think, is that enough for today? Yeah? Ilona, you enjoyed it? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you.